Today I'm going to have quite a bit of fun because I'm going to take a look at a Linux distribution that I normally wouldn't take a look at. This is a Linux distribution that I haven't looked at in many, many years. It's one I actually haven't even thought about in many, many years because I'm not its target audience. I'm not the user base that they're going after. This Linux distribution is, of course, Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a rolling release distribution. It's based on Debian testing and it is designed for security professionals. It's designed for those that want to do penetration testing, security research, computer forensics, reverse engineering, yada, yada, yada. And because it's been several years since I've looked at Kali Linux, I can go ahead and tell you it's probably changed a lot in the past four or five years. Again, it's been a while since I've looked at Kali. I know in years past when I looked at it just very briefly, even though I'm not a penetration tester, it does come with like hundreds of various uh, forensics and penetration testing pieces of software pre-installed. It's got a huge suite of that kind of software pre-installed and they keep adding new tools to Kali with every release. And I do notice though that their website, if you guys are looking at Kali.org, this website is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is a very professional, modern looking website. You can tell that a lot of work went in on this. Also, I also noticed that they now offer uh, several different desktops to choose from well three anyway they have xfce which i believe was the default desktop the last time i looked at it they still have xfce but they now also have gnome shell as well as kde plasma so i'm going to go ahead and grab the iso and i'm going to take kali linux 2024.2 is the version of the release and this was just released a, a few days ago i'm going to go ahead and spin up a quick virtual machine and take it for a spin so I've created a VM here, and I'm going to go ahead and run through the installation process with Kali. Again, since I haven't used it in a while, let's see how the installation process is. So I'm going to choose Graphical Install here in the Boot menu. And it boots us directly into a graphical installer launching full screen. We need to choose our language. English has been chosen. So all I need to do is click continue on this screen. As far as my location, I am in the United States. So I just need to click continue here. My uh, key map needs to be American English. It has chosen that correct for me. Now it's loading some drivers and additional components. Looks like it's going ahead and automatically configuring the network. Really not much for me to do with this installer other than just sit here and uh, watch the progress bars go by. Now we need to choose a host name for this computer. I'll call this Kali-Vert. Since it's a virtual machine, that way if I ever SSH into this virtual machine, it has a descriptive name that I'll know exactly which VM I'm SSHing into. Next up, uh, the domain name. This is not going to be a web server, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. I'll hit continue, although I could have entered something there if I'd wanted to. Let's set up a user and a password. So the full name for this user is DT. His username will also be DT. And then let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then re-enter the strong and complicated password. And now let me go ahead and hit continue. Next up, choose our time zone. I'm in the central time zone here in the US and I'll click continue after choosing that. Now it's configuring the clock. It is detecting our disk, so it's figuring out what virtual drives I have in this virtual machine. I wonder if it's going to allow me to set up a custom partition scheme or is it just gonna do some automatic partitioning? It looks like we get a choice here. We can either do the guided install, which is the automatic partitioning. Kali will just do what it wants to do with our drives, or I could manually partition the drive if I wanted to do that. I'm going to let it do the automatic partitioning. So I'll click continue, and it wants to know which drive to install to. I've got this uh, 26 gigabyte virtual hard drive in this virtual machine that I created. So I'll click continue on that. It does offer the option to have your home partition as a separate partition. If I was installing this on actual physical hardware, I would probably choose that because I'm in a VM that's going to create some wasted space. So I'm just going to do all files in one partitioning just because uh, this VM has only got 26 gigs of space. I'm limited on space, so I'm not going to create a whole bunch of extra partitions here. Finally, it gives us a little summary of the partition scheme. You can see it's going to create a one gig swap and then give 25 gigs of the drive over to the root partition, which will be an extend for file system. That's fine for me, so I'll just click continue. 
Next up, do we want to go ahead and write these changes to the disk? So it's basically our last warning. Hey, it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to choose yes, click continue, and away it goes. Now this portion of the installation will probably take about five to 10 minutes. I'll step away for a second, grab me a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Kali Linux has finished installing. And I'm back. That portion of the installation actually only took about two or three minutes because it hasn't installed a desktop environment yet. We get the next screen here choosing our desktop. Now XFCE is Kali's default desktop environment and I do like XFCE but because you know they do offer some optional uh, GNOME and KDE Plasma desktops I think today I'm going to choose GNOME because I why not? It's, it's one of the desktop environments I spend the least amount of time in, so that's the one I'm going to choose just to make my life a, a living hell, <laughs> at least for the next hour or two. So I'm going to click continue. All right, it looks like it finished installing the GNOME desktop and related utilities. Now that portion of the installer actually took about 10, maybe even 15 minutes. It took a, a while for it to actually install the desktop and all the desktop applications. Now it's asking where to install Grub. Do we want to install Grub to the primary drive? It defaults to yes. I'm going to leave that as yes. So I'm click continue and then enter our primary device. I only have one virtual drive in this virtual machine, so there's only the one device to choose. Then click continue, should install and configure Grub for us. And hopefully here in just a few seconds, it'll be ready for a reboot and we'll take a look at our freshly installed Kali Linux. And the installation completed and I rebooted the machine. Now let me go ahead and log in to the GNOME desktop. And we log into the GNOME 46 desktop environment. It looks like they're not using just plain vanilla GNOME 46, which being a Debian based distribution, I thought they might, but it has been themed a little bit. They're using a custom wallpaper. They've installed several extensions. You can see they're actually using the dash to dock here to put a dock here at the bottom of the screen, where of course GNOME typically would not have this bottom dock. Typically you only get the little side dash when you hit the super key and that usually is over here on the left hand side which honestly I kind of prefer the default behavior rather than having this dock at the bottom but it's fine for now I'm just going to leave it but I'm assuming if I wanted to change some things I could hit the super key and do a search for actually it's not settings I think it's the extension tool the GNOME extensions and let's go ahead and look for the dash to dock extension you can see that's this extension, if I turned it off, you could see the dock does go away. So that is what they're using. If I click on the little three dots here and click settings, I can actually play with some of the settings in dash to dock. Now I have this window open here. For one thing, I don't like the size being so big. 48 pixels is pretty big for those icons. So let me go ahead and adjust that. That looks uh, much better. You can see they have intelligent auto hide on. So if I made something full screen, which I don't know if I can make any of these windows full screen. Yeah, I can make that one full screen. You see it goes away. So anytime a windows full screen, the dock hides itself, which makes sense for me. I, since I like the dock on the left and I've already opened up this extension settings panel here, let me go ahead and just move it over here. Uh, just, you know, where I've, well, feel more comfortable with this but you can see there are several extensions that they have already installed and about half of them are already turned on so that's actually really nice uh, for those of you that are GNOME users you know, although plain vanilla GNOME without any extensions is pretty comfy these days I know in the early days of GNOME 3 and even some of the early uh, GNOME 40 uh, desktop environments you still had to install some extensions to just you know get the desktop desktop to function, you know, like you would expect uh, traditional desktop environments to work. But these days, GNOME 46, I've got to say, is a pretty fantastic desktop environment. Now at the top left here, we have our desktop uh, indicator here. We also have some menus. We have apps and places. Places are going to be your uh, file manager bookmarks, but the apps menu is like a traditional kind of menu system, which really makes sense on a Linux distribution like Kali Linux because it's got so much software installed it really makes taking a look at everything that's installed on the system a lot easier with a traditional menu rather than going through the traditional um, super key and looking at all the applications in that full screen dash. So you can see they've added their own like custom categories here. So they've got all of these computer forensics and penetration testing 
pieces of software categorized. Then you can see we have information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, uh, exploitation tools, sniffing and spoofing. And that sounds interesting. Uh, post exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, and social engineering tools. Now, again, I am not a uh, computer forensics expert. I, I really don't know anything about this, that particular subject. I'm not a penetration tester. I, I really am not a security professional in any way. I'm just a normal computer user, a normal desktop Linux computer user. And that really makes it kind of weird. That's why I don't take a look at distributions like Kali Linux that often. It's also why I also don't take a look at distributions that are geared toward gaming because of those particular distributions that are geared for hardcore gamers. I'm not a hardcore gamer. I don't have any like like I have a Steam account, but I don't really buy a, a whole lot of games. I don't have a large uh, collection of games that I've purchased. I don't have any of the really big popular games that take up a ton of space and that would use up a lot of CPU and a lot of GPU. I mean, people on gaming distributions, of course, when they're watching videos about it, they want benchmarks on those big AAA title games. And because I don't own any of those AAA games, I don't play them. I can't really do videos about those gaming distributions. Distributions. And it's kind of like that with these penetration testing uh, distributions like Kali Linux, like Parrot OS is, you know, I, I don't know anything about these tools, so I can't really, you know, show you how any of these tools work. I have no idea how any of these things work. But what I can show you is if I go to this last category here, useful applications, and if I click on that, then you get your normal desktop applications that you would expect on a, a, a traditional Linux distribution because now you have accessories, graphics, internet, uh, programming, sound and video system tools and utilities. So let's actually see what regular kind of applications they have installed. We have Cherry Tree, which I'm not sure what that is. Let's take a look at this. I go to the help and about Cherry Tree is a hierarchical note taking application. So it's a note taking application. Very cool. This is Cherry Tree 1.1.2. If I go back to the menu and into accessories, we have the GNOME extensions tool, which we already saw. We have files, which I'm assuming is going to be GNOME's Nautilus, which they call files these days. But the actual command to, to run it, to run the binary is Nautilus. I really like the dark GTK theme. I really like the icon set. It's blue, uh, actually blue with some purplish uh, hints to it that's actually uh, really nice it actually fits the the blue you know Kali theme also under accessories we have our SQLite database browser being a penetration testing kind of a piece of software right Kali Linux you may occasionally play with a SQLite database so it makes sense to have something like that here we also have text editor I'm assuming this is GNOME's text editor they have a couple of different text editors these days let's see which one this is is there any kind of about information about text editor yeah this is text editor 46.3 uh, i really hate the generic names because that really doesn't tell me the name of that program text editor right now i'm assuming that's g edit but heck if i know I, it really confuses me with these generic names like under graphics image viewer which i'm assuming is what was this eye of gnome i believe is what this was called back in the day now it's lupe uh 45.3 but this is uh the image viewer for gnome under internet our browser we have two browsers we have chromium and firefox that's interesting let's open up chromium and see uh, what version of chromium they're on now again this is based on debian testing so it is rolling release i did notice though when i launched chromium it did not launch, did I? Well, it's still, you see the little circly thing was going with my cursor? I think it was trying to launch it, but it didn't. Let's see if Firefox launches. Firefox launches just fine. So this is Firefox ESR. So that's the Firefox uh, extended support release. This is Firefox 115.11.0 ESR. So I'm not sure what the deal with Chromium not launching. Uh, that might be a little bit of a bug that, um, yeah, I'm not sure. We have a other category that has Crypt Setup and Faraday Stop. I'm not sure what those applications are. Obviously, we probably have something to do with penetration testing. We do have a programming category, but the only thing here is the SQLite database browser. Once again, really not much. As far as normal desktop applications, it's really 
light on applications. Sound and video, we have our videos player here, which is just your going to be your standard GNOME video player. Uh, we did not have an audio player. Of course, you could play audio with the video player as well, so it can serve a dual purpose, but really not much here. System tools, we have Gparted, which is an important tool to have, especially if you were using uh, Kali Linux on a live USB stick. You might want Gparted around if you need to do any kind of adjustments to the partitions on a machine you're working on. We do have our root terminal emulator. We also have the PowerShell, so let's go ahead and launch the PowerShell. And yeah, I really like the uh, the prompt here. And by the way, uh, is what terminal are we using? If I go to about, this is GNOME Terminal 3.52.1 for GNOME 46. So the terminal emulator is the GNOME Terminal. And this is the PowerShell. And there was also, under useful applications and system tools, there was a root terminal emulator, which I'm assuming would just... Yeah, prompt me for my sudo password, and then I would be logged in as the root user through this terminal. Let me go ahead and close that out. We have our GNOME system monitor, which is just the graphical system monitor that would allow us to check you know, system resource usage. I typically check these things always using HTOP in the terminal just to make things consistent. So I'm actually not going to take a look at that right now. Under preferences, um, we have some Qt5 and Qt6 uh, settings stuff and really not much else. GNOME tweaks is here. We have Kali tweaks. Let's see what this is. So this is an in-curses program. It allows us to configure the system for extra security. You see we have this hardening um, category here. We also have some meta packages that we could install, network repositories. We could configure the shell and prompt and virtualizations. Uh, many people do run Kali Linux inside virtual machines. So yeah, this is actually a really cool application for them to include. Let me go ahead and do shell and prompt just to see what we can do here. Configure the command prompt. So right now the, uh, the prompt style it's actually really fancy. It's got that two-line style. It you know, looks really good. I don't know if I would want to change it, but if I wanted to, to go back to a single line, something a little bit more you know, minimal and traditional, I could, but I actually like uh, the default, so I'm just going to leave that. Let me tab to the back command here. And if I go into the hardening category, obviously we could turn on some of this stuff so we could restrict a D message. We have privileged ports here. So if we wanted to restrict some ports, we have open SSL, which is already on. Samba is also already on. SSH does not look like it's on, but I'm assuming if I just hit the uh, space key, would that turn that on? Or maybe I need to hit the tab key. No, tab works the menu. It is the space bar. I, I actually hit return when I sit space, but the space bar would turn it on and then tab over to apply. And it's going to ask, do we really want to do that? Give it sudo privileges, press enter to continue. Yeah, yeah. So a really easy tool to work with. Now let me go ahead and open the terminal. We do have the terminal docked over here in the dock. I wonder if control alt T would also launch the terminal. It does not look like they have that set. How about super T? Would that do... I thought there would be some kind of command to launch the terminal as for some kind of key binding, but I can launch it from the dock. And let's go ahead and make this terminal full screen and I'll zoom in. Yeah, I really love the shell prompt. I don't know what shell they're using. If I do an echo dollar sign zero, I'm assuming it's probably bash, but no, it's actually ZSH. So it's ZSH they're using. And what kernel are we on? If I do a uname dash R, they're on 6.6.15, but this... ISO was released a few days ago, and because it's based on Debian testing and it's rolling, that kernel is probably already on like the 6.8 series by now. So if I did an update, I bet we would be on something different. So if I did a, a sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade, and I'm not going to take the upgrade. I just want to see if it would offer us a new kernel. And looking back through the package list, uh, there's only 28 packages that could be updated, and I do not see a new kernel just yet. Yeah, there's really nothing important that needs to be updated from that, so I'll decline taking that update for now. Let's see if HTOP is installed. It is not, but I love the fact that they have the uh, apt package manager prompt us, hey, do we want to install it? In that command you were trying to install, it, it wasn't here, but you could install this program. I like that, so I'm going to choose yes. 
And now let's run HTOP and let's check system resource usage. Now the GNOME desktop environment typically uses a, a, about a gig, sometimes a little over a gig of RAM when I do these tests. And that's the same here. So it's about normal. It's using about 1.1 gigs of the six gigs of RAM. I gave this VM as far as a CPU usage, really not much CPU being used right now. Of course, I'm not really doing anything that should be using any CPU. So that's expected. Let me queue to quit out of HTOP. One thing I should do, because there is so much stuff installed on this, let's do a apt uh, list space dash dash installed. I believe that's the apt command to actually give me a list of all the packages that are installed, and that was the correct command. Now if I up arrow and pipe that into WC, which is the word count program, dash L, give it the L flag for a line count rather than a word count, let's see how many lines were in that output. 2,815, that means there are 2,815 packages installed via the apt package manager here on Kali Linux. Some other things that I might wanna check, because I, again, I don't, I'm not that familiar with Kali. I'm assuming they're using Pipewire as their audio server based on Debian. Debian's defaulting to Pipewire these days, and they are using Pipewire because this is GNOME, and GNOME has now started to default to just using Wayland uh, as its default login session. You can always fall back to Xorg if you need to, but I'm assuming we're using uh, Wayland as the display server. I actually did not check that when I logged in, but I can check it here in the terminal by doing an echo xdg, I believe it's xdg underscore session, all caps underscore type. And oh, it actually defaults to X11. Now that is interesting uh, because I did not uh, specify X11 when I logged in uh, at the, uh, the login manager at GDM. Let me go ahead and close out the terminal. One last thing I want to do, of course, as always, I have to check wallpapers. So I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to go to display settings and let's check out. Well, first of all, um, this is the display information. But if I go to appearance, we do have the option of doing uh, a default light theme or a dark theme. Actually, even though it says default, the dark theme is enabled by default, so that's weird. As far as the wallpaper pack, uh, all of these, like the abstract art here, this is just your standard GNOME wallpaper pack, which is a great set of wallpapers, but I wanted to see some of the Kali-specific wallpapers. For example, this blue here against a dark GTK theme, that light blue, actually looks quite good. I could use that if I wanted something really light, you know, and that's a really light wallpaper, but again, it contrasts well with the dark theme. Here's a dark wallpaper to go with the dark theme. Actually, for dark on dark, which is something I don't usually like, yeah, that's actually really quite nice. Uh, the purple here is not bad. Uh, these keyboard uh, wallpapers, I believe, is part of the standard GNOME wallpaper pack. So of the branded wallpapers, the Kali branded wallpapers, you know what? I think I'm going to go with that. That looks damn sexy in my opinion. So that was just a very quick installation and overview of Kali Linux 2024.2 with the GNOME desktop environment. Obviously, I'm not into computer forensics and penetration testing. I can't show you any of those. You know, it looked like more than 100 different small little utilities that are designed for those kinds of tasks because I don't work in that field. Obviously, you know, I, I couldn't deep dive into that stuff, but honestly, I'm not sure if you necessarily need to be like a computer forensic specialist to use Kali Linux because I see a lot of, especially the script kitties out there that, you know, that are pretending to be hackers. We all do this. Some, sometimes we want to seem like we're more of a super villain than we actually are in real life. There is a lot of you guys that, you know, can barely, you know, put together a a basic bash script or a python script but you guys you know you so want to be like that james bond villain and if you want to look super cool obviously kali linux is the distribution that you want to be running now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode matt james steve armor dragon darloff daedalus gdr george lee matthew methos erion paul peace harsh and fedora realities for less red prophet roland
and Soul Ashtray, Tian Ren, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Kali Linux would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.